other is shades happening are today? Every what? time I turn around, another is another Virgo. Virgo. Do you hate us? Wow. Um, I don't hate you. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I'm sorry. I don't hate you. No, it's not that. It's just we clash a little bit. Mm -hmm. What's up, I'm Mia Bell, and you're watching another episode of BET Talks featuring singer, songwriter, and now we're adding producer to the name. Uh-huh. She goes by Mariah the Scientist, and the album is on the way. It's on the way. To be eaten alive, girl. Yes, any day now. Is that what you're going Counting. to do to us, no, Scorpion? Uh, of course not. Indian Scorpion, of Red not. Indian Scorpion. <laughs> I won't eat you alive, no. Okay, well, I would. Now, before the cameras cut on, we were talking about all of this red. I mm -hmm. feel like it's your color. Thank you. I was also saying that it brings in love, it brings in money, mm -hmm. and all those good things. And then you put me on to the red Indian scorpion? Yes. Tell me more. So, I decided to wear red. Well, I'm a Scorpio. Okay, we know that. Okay. And your feelings, lethal too. Uh, and my feelings, for mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> and so, I decided to name my project to be eaten alive, and I just felt like the metaphor I came up with was, if you eat me and I'm poisonous, then I'll kill you. Right. You know, not that I want to, but you forced me into that predicament. So when I was doing some research on just scorpions in general, um, I found that there was a red Indian scorpion that if it stings you, it slows your heart rate, it attacks your heart, and then you die. I, I feel it. I feel the energy. Do you feel like you've been stung before? Um, Not enough to kill me. Right. Mm -hmm. I love but that. probably, I think everybody has. Right, and that's why that pen of <laughs> yours gets to work. One thing about you, the pen. The pen is working? Yeah, Thank and you. it does what it has to do. It makes me feel good. Yeah, and to know that you write all of your stuff is really, really amazing, and it speaks to the things that you've been through, too. Right. Especially dealing with love. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've been talking to the girls. Have I? I think so. I've been talking to you. Yeah, you have. Okay, good. We will get into that part. Okay, good. Good to know. <laughs> of course. Now, I love, love, love finding more out about you because the internet is just, the internet is too much. It's too much. Yeah, it's too much. But mm -hmm. then when I hear you speak for yourself mm -hmm. and just go through your journey, I'm just so interested in how it all started, your musical background, mm -hmm. when you found out you can sing. Talk to me. So, when I was young, I was in a choir, mm -hmm. of course. Um, in elementary school, mm -hmm. but obviously I didn't, I didn't pursue it. I didn't take it any further. Um, and then eventually, when I got to high school, I started to like science. I went to St. John's University in New York to study biology. Right to be an anesthesiologist. Yes, and yeah. but I I dropped out. Mm -hmm. um, How long were you there for? Three years. Okay, so you were like putting almost, in the work. I was almost finished. You can actually still go back. I mean, I said that I would. Mm -hmm. So somewhere in between going there and dropping out, I decided to make some music mm -hmm. and I released it and now here we are. Right. But no, I didn't um I didn't intend to pursue it as a career, no. Mm -hmm. It was just like casual. At first you were pursuing a boo, right? Something like that. It was a gift. I like made a song as a gift. You're so sweet. I love that. And Maybe too sweet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's okay though because that kind of <laughs> catapulted everything that you do now, right? Yeah. It and is. just hearing yourself back in that space too. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure whoever you gifted the music to, mm -hmm. they probably sitting there like, damn. He'll I be okay. Appreciate it. Uh -huh. He should have, but he'll be all right. Right. Exactly. It didn't happen. Right. Didn't happen. <laughs> didn't work out. It's okay though. Of course. Now, who kind of confirmed to you that the talent was there and that you should pursue it? Um, I have a couple of friends. I, I don't have too many friends, but the two two solid friends I do have, their names are Alexis and Malik. Mm -hmm. And they went to school with me, too. I knew um, Alexis from Atlanta, though. Okay. And when I played them the music, they were like, wow, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. You know, you should do something with it. Mm -hmm. And then I put it out. They encouraged me to put it out, so and I appreciate from, them for that. Yeah. And then from there, people started reaching out in that space. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. And then eventually I signed a deal and it just escalated. You know. And through signing your first deal too, what are some things that you learned that you're able to carry with you now? To be confident mm -hmm. in what you want or what you don't want. Um, but also being um, open and willing to evolve or grow. Right. I think that's important because there's always room for improvement. Mm -hmm. um, 
and I think just not letting anybody get in the way of your creative process. Right. Yeah. What is your creative process when you put together your your work? Because um, you, you only gave us two singles, and you didn't put none of the names of the songs. I know. I've been trying to, like, keep it. <laughs> I don't know, because everywhere I go now, everybody's talking to me about the titles, even though I haven't said anything about the titles. Well, it's okay. It's out there now. Some kind of way it has, right, right. <laughs> it has been prolific in finding its way around everyone's ears and mm-hmm. minds. But um, the process is just, usually I like to do 10 songs because I feel like it's to the point. It's like no room for filler music. Right. It's like very curated. It's very concise. So usually I do 10 songs. And this time around, I had, I set it up maybe like a year and a half ago. I thought I was ready with the 10 I had, but I scrapped a lot of it and I restarted some new stuff mm-hmm. and then incorporated some of the old stuff and then just like meshed really well. Okay, what made you want to start scrapping? Did things start changing in your life where you're like, I don't really feel that way anymore to put this energy out? I just feel like, I look at the 10 like a, I look at the 10 like a, a complete, like a clock or something, Okay, right? Like a, but not like a real clock, but just like, you know, maybe like 10 different things. And mm-hmm. it's like, I feel like it needs to connect and I feel like maybe somewhere in the 10, the some of the puzzle pieces, they just didn't like make the most sense for me. Mm-hmm. So I just took them out mm-hmm. and just tried finding things that would really make it cohesive. Right, and then flow together. I feel like that's also the scientist in you. Could be, mm-hmm. could be. A little bit <laughs> controlling, perfectionist, you know, yeah. meticulous. For and sure. that, that's also the Scorpio in you yes. too. Yes, no, for sure. Yeah. It definitely came out. It came out yeah. for this project, for sure. I love that, though. I love you guys as a people. I'm a Virgo, and I tend to... What is happening today? Every what? time I turn around, another is Virgo. another Virgo? Do you hate us? Wow. Um, I don't hate you. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. I don't hate you. No, it's not that. It's just... Oh. You're hard to, hard to satisfy. Oh, we are. But, like, not even because you're not satisfied, but because you like to say that you're not satisfied. Mm. Please stop reading me, girl. I'll, I shall digress. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> but Scorpio and Virgo has, like, we clash a little bit. Mm-hmm. But we could relate. Yeah. There are similarities. Like maybe, maybe there are too many similarities. Yeah. You know, could be that. Because mm-hmm. the Scorpio situation did not work out for me. But God love for y'all. And the Virgo, ugh, we on the same page. Well, right. that could be the men. Could be the men. <laughs> also that, too. Yeah, the men. Okay. Different. Virgo men, different. Yeah. Scorpio men, different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense now. We came to a conclusion. Right. It's not us. It's the men. It's the men. It's always the men. Mm-hmm. Now, this album, mm-hmm. first of all, the way that you put it out there, you released mm-hmm. it. Of course, Thug, he dropped his record. You dropped yours mm-hmm. from a woman, him from a man. Mm-hmm. And for me, it was like, that was the moment where I'm like, y'all gonna stop playing with her. <laughs> yeah, well. Y'all gonna stop playing with her. It's nice to be able to create with somebody. Right. It's really nice. Mm-hmm. I love course. that. It's like one of the best things. Talk about how you guys come together when it comes to the music and Mm -hmm. how you guys kind of test each other through that process. Like, did you listen to From a Man first? How did that all come about? So From a Man was an older song than Mm -hmm. From a Woman, but um, he has like a different creative process than me, right? He's been making music for longer than me as well. Right. So his like pool of music is large, Mm -hmm. you know, and mine is like smaller, but growing. Mm -hmm. And so, um... Any, any way I can find where it aligns, I think it's like really, it's just fun. It's exciting. I felt like um, with From a Man and From a Woman, we had similar video treatments and mm-hmm. he had like shot the video. So um, I thought it was ironic that the videos were planned to be kind of similar. And then right. I just felt like it would be nice to, to merge them. And then his original title wasn't From a Man, but he changed it to From a Man. Mm-hmm. So it's like that was his part. And then my part was like the creative on a video yeah Mm -hmm. we love the video thank you and just the way that you've been creating i think in general Mm -hmm. you know it tells a story which is really cool Mm -hmm. and the things that you've kind of learned throughout this process what would you say those are being open Mm -hmm. are you ever scared when you're putting this stuff out um i'm actually not like i feel like putting it out is the should be like the easiest part Mm -hmm everything before that it's really like the crunch time before the project comes out Mm -hmm. that makes it just like you know it's like more hectic then Mm -hmm. but like the process of making it and releasing releasing it are like the the best parts i feel like it's just like that 
one piece right around it that makes it like kind of chaotic but for the most part I feel like once I release it I feel like good it's out there it's like I'm not scared though I feel like it's nice to express myself yeah yeah that's beautiful now I see in your interview with big boy you talked mm -hmm. about the first times that you you know hit the stage mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't they don't really put into terms that yeah you're a new artist and your first performance maybe is like the biggest performance mm -hmm. and of course you gotta you need space to grow and you need space to learn and you need yeah. these things to happen so that you get better mm -hmm. how do you feel now when you get on the stage in front of people and are you warming up to it in a different way I think so I think I've performed a lot since then mm -hmm. like a lot like, yeah I have been on so many tours I have been on if I could count I have been on four tours mm -hmm. and then I have had non-stop college dates mm -hmm. I really like the college dates right because the college kids they're just like amped up and you can like feed off of their energy yeah so I feel like they have given me I've been like really blessed for those opportunities they're like very welcoming mm -hmm. and I appreciate that of course. Um, and I think it's just I've definitely gotten way more comfortable you know way more just willing to have fun mm -hmm. in the midst of I guess singing to someone you know it's just like Right. Maybe the like reconnecting with my music because you know like when I said when I put the music out it's like I kind of just like detach from it. Mm -hmm. I still listen to it but it's not like I disassociate at that point. So right. it's like when it comes to like singing and it's like I don't know if some of the older songs and they necessarily resonate with me how they did when I was making it. But I think um, just like getting back in the vibe of being able to identify with certain aspects of my music yeah i feel like it's nice mm -hmm. now with this project mm -hmm. to be eaten out alive to be eaten alive mm -hmm. excuse me mm -hmm. the 27th your birthday yes is that your <laughs> gift to the people what made it you choose that gift. date as a release date um i just ran with the scorpion theme mm -hmm. you know and i feel like yeah i feel like it is a gift the back i feel like i've been gifted i've been blessed with these things and this ability and now i just feel like it's nice to just like it's like a gift to myself and to everyone else. Now, as you approach the date, uh -huh. what are some things that you're doing to kind of prepare yourself? Or are you kind of just living in the moment and letting the fans take it on? Um, Cause they're tweeting every day. So I decided I would fast okay. in, in October. Mm -hmm. I was becoming this wine drinker and I liked wine. I stopped I stopped drinking hard liquor because it's just too much. I don't know if I'm getting old or something, mm -hmm. but it's just like, <laughs> it's taking me down, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, I started drinking like white wine. It was like nice and refreshing. And then I decided for October, I would just like not have any wine until the day I put it out. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe it would just like help me like zone in and everything. And then um, I think just teasing it here and there, you know, and just like, listening to it every day just like feeling the embodiment of it mm -hmm. um wearing my red of course you know just down to my nails and toes mm -hmm. um you know and just like trying to feel the vibe yeah you know exuding the vibe the essence of the project and everything so mm -hmm. i think um just living in it yeah you're you know? doing it well thank you now the joint that you produced mm -hmm. Talk to me about that. Because first of all, there's a snippet going around. Mm -hmm. It's on SoundCloud. Uh, so is it heaven or heaven is a place? It's called heaven is a place on earth. On earth. Okay. Yes. Heaven is a place on I earth. I know that's a long title. So I guess everyone has shortened it. Yeah. You know, but over the quarantine, mm -hmm. I was bored. And um, I just felt like maybe if I just order up this production equipment, maybe I will make something. Maybe not, but it's worth the try. So mm -hmm. I ordered some equipment and then... Um, I was just playing around with it. Apparently, there's like a lot of moving parts to production, yeah. which is why I don't think I would do it like full time. Know, no, I definitely don't. <laughs> it's very tedious, but it came out really good, and I'm really proud of it because I just feel like that's all me. It and is. I didn't have to share that with anybody, and that's why I put it as my opener because it's just like this is me, and I feel like it's a good way to summarize my whole project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't say that you might not do it because it's just too much, you know. Like I feel like the way people are gonna react to it though, because the way they've been reacting from the snippet <laughs> mm -hmm. is gonna be like, damn, now I gotta be a producer for real now. <laughs> I mean, I would probably get involved. Mm -hmm. You know, I would be hands on, but as far as like 
I just don't know if I necessarily it's see. Lot. It's a lot. Mm. It's a lot of work for sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're all so excited for the project to come out. I am too. I'm very excited. And you are. Your that. fans are. I am. BET mm. is. You gonna listen to it? Of course I am. <laughs> I done had from a woman about time on loop. <laughs> yeah, man. I can't wait. I'm very excited. I love From a Woman About Mine. Those are great. Yeah, mm -hmm. they are. And you know what? We're ready for more greatness. Thank Congratulations. You. Thanks for having me. Of course. I and when wait. it drops, you got to come back again because we're going to dissect Ooh. everything. I would like to do that, actually. I would like yeah, to do it, too. Call me up. I will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mariah well, thanks, the guys. Scientist. She's here, y'all. BT Talks. <laughs>